He's going to give us the strength to mount up on wings as eagles and to fly through these next years if you will believe, if you will embrace that it's you and that the time is now. She is dark as obsidian and it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could they be using goddess and magic? She is timeless. The blood that doesn't need a blood. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman. And welcome to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew. But return these, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. I got my Ric Flair drip on today, doing my Ric Flair drip. But this is the time where we get into our roll call. So I need everyone who knows something isn't quite right, but just can't put your finger on it, to the front of the class to read aloud. All right, welcome to the It's the End of the World as We Know It episode of The Wireless Woman. And before we get into today's content, I do want to take some time to recognize some of my new subscribers. Now, I have way more subscribers than this, so I'm not going to be able to shout everyone out on this particular episode. And I have had some new subscribers recently that haven't been added to my subscription queue just yet. So hang in there, and I am going to acknowledge my subscribers because I truly appreciate every single one. So Caleb Sandoval is my son. Welcome to my channel, dear heart. And Martin Sandoval, welcome to my channel. This is, he's, he's a new subscriber, but not so new to me. That's my ex-husband. <laughs> Help me welcome Leticia. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel, Chantel. And my good friend, Ty Caldwell, welcome to the channel. Slim Pimpin82, welcome to the channel. Also, my new subscriber, it's J Dub. Y'all, what an honor to have you, it's J Dub. It's J Dub has his own um, channel on YouTube. He's also a content creator that does reviews for Married at First Sight, Ready to Love, like reality TV shows. And he has a really great great perspective he is the number one youtube commenter and thanks j Dub. that's a classic man right there y'all he's a classic man i don't know the words so i'm just gonna sing it classic man and thank you steve jackson for subscribing to my channel now i do have many more subscribers and i'm going to shout you out i'm also going to be adding my new subscribers to a drawing for some merchandise and some gear. So be on the lookout for that. I will be announcing the winners and contacting them via email. So make sure you tune in, stay connected. 
<laughs> Stay plugged in to the unplugged wireless woman. This particular episode is going to mark a departure from some of what my content has been before. Um, it's an episode I really wasn't prepared to do just yet. So if you watch the Who is the Wireless Woman episode, you'll know that I started to hear the audible voice of God at about 19. So for several of the past few years, I wasn't really hearing the audible voice of God like that. So during my off the grid time, I did start to hear the voice of God again, and it was a very, very different experience. And so there were things that God was showing me and telling me during that time that were for an appointed time. So when I went to the mountains in April of this year, that's when I woke up in the middle of the night and I just heard the wireless woman, just that simple. I wrote it down, came back home, started my business. I knew it was going to be a channel. I knew that God wanted me to tell the things that he had told me in the previous year. I just didn't know how or when. So around the summertime, around my birthday in July, I really got this unction to just kind of start the channel. But one thing about me and people who have known me since I started to hear the audible voice of God, I've always been a very reluctant prophet. I've always been very reluctant to get called out into the realm of speaking on God's behalf. One, because, I mean, my lifestyle is a wreck, like, let's just be honest, but perfection is not a prerequisite for being used by God. Sorry. Unless you just really don't read the Bible at all, <laughs> there's there's no way you could believe people telling you that you have to be, look, do, sound, speak a certain way in order to be a vessel for God to use. Every single last one of us is made in the image of God to do a work on God's behalf. The only thing that separates people who do God's will and people who don't are the people that just simply choose to or not to. Um, you know, God uses animals. God uses any and everything. The cattle on a thousand hills are his. God uses who and what he chooses. Okay, excuse me, that wasn't grammatically correct. God chooses whom he uses. So I've always been very, a very, very extremely reluctant prophet. And it's actually cost me a lot of things in my life because the provision for your life is wrapped up in the vision for your life. I have suffered a lot for the visions and things that God have shown me that I was reluctant to speak on. In the summertime, I felt like he was saying, hey, go ahead and start this channel. But I got really caught up in doing stuff that at the time I even consciously knew was me sabotaging and procrastinating and feet dragging. And there were people around at that time, Tanya, my co-host, <laughs> Tanya, my co-host who's not here, um, knows that during that time we were really in kind of like hyper overdrive to go ahead and do the channel and start the channel coming into August. Our initial launch date was 8-18-21. So that time came and that time passed and, you know, I just continued to plug away at doing other things. And then even when I started this channel, I was, I was very, I just have been very reluctant to speak on the things that I've seen and heard. Like there's an urgency in me that I haven't really been able to convey because like I said, I spent a year sitting on something that God told me because it just wasn't time to say it. So after sitting and watching the Netflix movie, Don't Look Up, and realizing that everything God showed me is now a full-length feature film, it seems like it's probably a good time to go ahead and say it. At least if nothing else to confirm it. <laughs> I was like on a gag order for a long time where I couldn't say it to anybody. And then I started saying it to just a sprinkle, like two close friends. People who know me well, they can attest to the accuracy of the things that I do prophesy. I don't prophesy often, but when I prophesy, I'm prophesying what I've seen. As I stated in my last video, 
we're going to see a manifestation of blessing like never before. So people are going to start to feel an unction within them, this discomfort, this out of placeness that's letting you know that the thing that you've been prepared for, it's time to activate. And if you got people close to you that live in an alternate reality that don't have access to the spirit realm, they are going to keep tugging and pulling at you to keep you from manifesting your destiny. It's really, really time to come out of all of that, to come out of everything you feel like you've been expected to do in order to truly embrace the call and the will of God for your life. Whether you believe in God or not, at this point, you believe in so many things as God, so many things that are not God, we've made a God, that you can take a chance and believe in yourself at this point. Believe in that thing that's been nagging at you for so many years. You were never able to do it before now because that thing was for an appointed time. And I am here to tell you that time is now. And it doesn't matter who you are or how long it's taken because I've been this prophet in the making since I was 19 years old for 21 years. Back in 1998, there was a movie called Armageddon. And Don't Look Up is basically just like the revamped version of Armageddon. So if you will recall, Prince recorded a song in 1982 called 1999. And this particular song spoke about what would have been the end of the world. So right around that same time in 98 and 99, you had a lot of apocalyptic films that were coming out. So now fast forward 20 years, 21 years to where we are now. Like Daniel said, there's this message that came at a certain time, but it's been held up in the heavens and it's just now getting to us. So God took me back 10 years ago. Um, prophets get to time travel. They get to see alternate versions of the future. It's kind of like some Doctor Strange stuff. I can't really explain it to people who either one, don't believe in it, or two have never experienced it. But the more and more that you walk with God, you get to see things that you would you just would not believe. It's like Enoch. He walked with God and then he was not. Like you're able to be transfigured, you're able to be transformed, transfixed. I have sat on the side of mountaintops with God and seen things that I had no way of seeing and knowing. Um, I've prophesied things just as personal as about people's grandmothers, about seasons and times when people would die, about presidents being elected. Um, I have seen some things that I'm still just not disposed to say yet. Um, but I do have to say these things at certain times as a witness as a timestamp to be able to say God was there. Otherwise, it just seems like a coincidence. You know, God does nothing unless he reveals his plan first. That's the way we calibrate it. And so people get real spooked out by that. I've heard people say that the dispensation of prophets is over. And I wish in some ways that was true because I wish the work was done. I wish this wasn't coming to me and passing to me. Um, but unfortunately, we're all wrong. Evil is still running amok. So clearly the work has not been finished. Even Jesus said that I go to the Father and I'm leaving you here to do even greater things than what I've done. So, you know, you have to consult with him if you felt like all the time of miracles was done. I feel like V from Vendetta. But the truth is, there is something terribly wrong with this country. This whole video is the deep shit. Um, I'm going to tell you first and foremost what the vision was. So I was high and up above it. And I'm pretty sure that I'm supposed to start a school of prophets to show and teach and develop other people in their prophetic gifting. And I just want to start this whole thing by saying that 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 is something that I just 
have been so reluctant to do. Um, I just don't want to lead anything. Like I generally fall out with my supervisors at my jobs after a certain amount of years because everyone can see the leadership ability in me. But I really don't, I really don't be wanting to lead, but people feel so intimidated by the anointing that's on me that they start lying on me and trying to throw monkey wrenches in my career and stuff like that so that I can't, you know, get to the front of the line, not even realizing that I, I'm not called to run nobody's business or corporation. I, I really could care less. A lot of this stuff ain't even going to be here in a little bit. But anyway, I digress. But what I saw in the vision, I was I was high and up above it. And that speaks to position and that speaks to time. But I saw something that looked like a flaming mountain fall out of the sky and hit the earth. And I saw this section of the earth that was covered in darkness. Now, I'm sitting one day with a guy that I work with. And um, I happened to just tell him, you know what I saw. And he said, oh, that's the God of chaos. And I'm like, the God of chaos. Um, what's that? So evidently the God of chaos is some asteroid that's been circling the earth for years. They found it in like 2004, which he said they actually found it back in the 60s or 70s and they've been charting it. Um, so there's been a lot of near misses and They've been thinking that, you know, it's it's going to miss the earth, but it's charted to hit the earth in 2029 or 2068. And I'm pretty, pretty certain that what I've seen is, is what it is, you know, and on my Facebook, on my Facebook stories, I posted a story where I was talking about how the activity of God is not a static thing. God can show you what's coming in the future, but it doesn't always mean that that's set in stone. Like I saw a lot of prophets get deterred with the whole Donald Trump, with the whole Donald Trump presidency thing, because they heard it. I heard it too. I heard Donald Trump was getting another four years, but it moved, you know, something in the atmosphere, something in God's plan changed. It's just like when God came to Isaiah and sent him to tell King Hezekiah that he was going to die. And when King Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and showed God a different side of his heart, God gave him 15 more years. It's just like how God made the sun stand still for Joshua when he was in battle, when he turned back destruction from Nineveh, when he turned back destruction from the Hebrew people because Moses entreated their safety, because Moses asked him to. When God turned back destruction from Sodom and Gomorrah because Abraham asked him to. You know, there are so many instances. It's just like when God sent the death angel into Egypt, but everyone that had their door marked, the angel passed over. So I just believe that there is going to be a remnant. You know, we've seen this story be prophesied in so many different ways. And I got to be honest with you, this Netflix movie brought me to tears. It really scared me because all of the details, all the way down to there being a woman president, to her temperament, hair color. I mean, everything about how God showed me this was going to happen was in that movie. All the way up to people not believing, people, people being at odds with each other. We're at a point where we have to battle the spirit of this age. Now, people may not know, but we just recently moved into a new age in 2020. Like when you saw all of this pandemonium going on, all of this unrest over elections and health issues and all of this stuff going on, all of this uproar about women's rights and the LGBTQIA community, like there was a lot converging right in that moment. And I got to tell you, that was supposed to have been it. You know, God came to me and he said that he was giving us 10 more years 
um, 10 more years. And I'm not actually sure when those 10 years started. I don't know if they started prior to 2020 or not. But I know that I saw an outcome. Like I said, I saw what everybody else saw. I saw Donald Trump win in the presidency. But then all of a sudden, something shifted, something changed. And when I took a step back and I looked at it again, and then I unplugged from everything and spent time with God, I asked him, I said, how can two groups of people that both love you so much? You know, I saw Christians on both sides of this. I saw, I saw conservatives and liberals in the same party split over this particular issue. And I said to myself, how, how can this be? How can it be that people who agree on everything else can't agree on this? And he said, because I haven't chosen. I said, I said, do you choose Donald Trump or do you choose Joe Biden? And he said, I've chosen neither. He said, I've chosen neither of them, but Joe Biden is going to win this election. Baby, when I tell you how confusing that was, but then, like I said, he told me, this is what I choose. This is who I choose. And for reasons that I can't explain right now, I can't go into that part of it. But when he explained to me what he was choosing in the stead of these two grumpy old white men, it made me realize that a lot of things that were getting ready to unfold had to be true. That guy had chosen something he had already showed me once I saw him reject Donald Trump and choose Joe Biden, it was like we were choosing between two different trajectories, two different realities for America, for the world as we see it. And I got to honestly say that this particular path is, is not doing anything but buying us time. And I don't want to get political. I don't even want to get spiritual because right now it's not about who's Christian and who's not, who's conservative and who's liberal. It's not about any of that. At this point, the path that we're on can't be stopped. It can be deterred. It can be deferred, but it, it's not going to be stopped anymore. You know, the, the, the time, the time to hesitate is through. The time to hesitate is through. This Netflix movie, if you haven't seen Don't Look Up, watch it. It's really, really real. And when God first started to tell me to prepare for what I saw, I'm going to tell you what I did. I went out and bought up a bunch of toilet paper. Listen, people who know me, they'll tell you this is true. I have a whole pantry stocked. I have a whole garage full of water bottles that are stacked all the way up to the ceiling. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you. If what God showed me about how this works out is true, I more than likely won't even be here to see it. You know, I thought when he said prepare, he meant physically, but now I'm realizing when he's saying prepare the people, you know, I, I have donned myself on this channel as being a community builder. You know, I felt like it was going to be us coming together and, learning how to sow and seed saving and learning how to garden. And I'm going to be honest with you, it is. It's still that. If you really want to be ready for what comes, you will devolve. We're going to have to go back to how things were before. We're going to have to learn how to, you know, we're going to have to have generators and skills. We're going to have to know how to build things and heal things. We're going to have to become a strong community of people because for the people that survived this, life is going to be very different than what you've known it. And it's crazy because when you go to Revelation and you look at the language in Revelation and it talks about the tribulation and those that survive it and those that are taken up, let me explain something to you. And hopefully I can say this without crying. There's a reason why Jeff Bezos and all these people are on the moon. There's a reason why Whitey on the moon. There's a reason why every chance they get, they leave this orbit. They are up in space looking for something. 
And if you don't think those people are going to leave up off this planet, I know y'all thought the rapture was God coming for people. If they was going to be caught up in the sky to going up to the spirit in the sky. Like, I know that's what y'all thought it was. There's a reason why every rich person that can afford it has a space ticket. Okay? That movie was scary accurate. I mean, all the way up to the end when they started making up stuff. But for those of us that don't want to eat the rich, like I'm telling you to, we need to eat the rich. You, you're going to have to learn how to survive. Without TV and social media, you're going to have to learn how to talk to the people that are next to you. And you're going to have to develop within yourself enough humanity again. Enough humanity again to want to preserve life on this planet by helping people that are next to you. By sharing what you have with people that are next to you. Because if selfish ambition and looking out for yourself is your only purpose in life, you will become violent and murderous when up against scarce resources. And it's not the world you want to live in. The world we're living in now is not the world that you want to live in if everybody can't get their hands on what they want. We have to begin to cultivate our humanity, our deity again. You know, there are sons of God and there are sons of men. There are people that understand their higher calling. There are people that will look out for other people. So the spirit of the age is narcissism. That's why you're hearing so much about it. One thing I can tell you about the serpent, the devil, the evil, the opposition, whatever you want to call it, I do not care about semantics anymore. One thing I can tell you about the spirit of opposition, about Satan, the devil, the deceiver, is that he, he also does nothing unless people know about it, unless people can see him doing it. And all of this conversation about narcissism and narcissists, if you'll notice, all the narcissists act exactly the same, like I, robot clones. Like you'll hear people talking about narcissists and they all seem to exhibit the exact same behavior and this war and this world rewards the most narcissistic people the people that step on other people and bully and hurt other people the people who consume everything for themselves these are the people that we celebrate like we literally just elected a president that is a malignant narcissist by all descriptions like you don't need to have a psychology degree to be able to see that and we saw what happened i mean he was wildly celebrated as someone that was going to save this country and i'll be honest with you i'm not going to say that he was or he wasn't i don't actually see donald trump as a villain i see him as a revelator he's showing us about he's showing us something about who we are as people in the state of our country, the fact that he could draw a line and divide people in their own family, people who love each other against each other for the sake of a political party and, and political affiliations is wild. The fact that he could pull off something that hasn't been done since this country declared independence, which is a potential coup insurrection of the capital i mean that is wild y'all y'all didn't see that no one knows what it means but it's provocative no it's not it's it gets gross. the people going it's going to take the true empath the true empathic energy it's going to take a lot of women who have been faithful it's going to take the divine feminine because you have to remember the serpent is chasing the woman through the desert it's if you haven't read the book of enoch like i can't even have a serious conversation with christians who either don't believe they need to or haven't read the book of enoch 
there's more to the story than just what the Bible that was hand selected for us tells you about the nature of God. We only have a certain amount of time. And I don't expect anybody to take me seriously. You know, when Noah said that it was going to rain, there's a lot of people that aren't here today because they just, they didn't believe that. And I have heard the Bible be referred to as fan fiction for God, um, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe God or not, me or not, there's a big hole in the center of America, a huge one, a huge giant hole in the center of America. And something used to be there. We know just from looking through the layers of earth that this planet's been wiped out several times before. And in Matthew 28 and 20, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you even unto the end of the age. You know, and I talked about these ages. Like the last time we were in the age of Aquarius was the late 1960s, early 70s, when you saw a lot of political unrest and social changes and climates and world and and the Vietnam War and, and wars and rumors of wars. And we are back in the age of Aquarius. But this age is a little bit different than the last time we were in the age of Aquarius because of where Jupiter is position. This is the first time we've been in this Aquarian age in 800 years. So you have to start to ask yourself the question about what types of things happened on this earth 800 years ago. And I'm just telling you, it was the end, it was the beginning of an Aquarian age, the age of Aquarius, when Jesus was born. And because the Magi and the wise men and the astronomers at that time knew what signs they were looking for, they knew based on the prophecies that had been given by the prophets and based on the seasons and the times, because the Bible even tells you to know, make sure you're not ignorant of the seasons and the times. So these particular signs in the heavenlies was a designation to them that the Son of God would be born at that time and in a certain place. The things that God is doing happen in time. They make sense when you have learned to look for seasons and times. And just looking at what happened in 2020, if you don't believe anything else I said, if you don't believe anything I say, just look at 2020. And tell me you don't believe that something happened in the spirit realm last year. When you look back on it now. So. All I'm saying to you is. That. I am here. And I don't even know what that means. I said it in my who is the wireless woman video. That when I sat by that river and I sat in front of that fire. I realized that I was here, just here for some reason. And I'm not sure what that is, but I know that you're here for some reason. And we may all think we know what that is, but when you put whatever you think you were born and created to do in the spectrum of not potentially being able to do it in the next 10 years, I want you to get serious about what's important to you about finding out knowledge of self because you're going to have to know what's inside of you. You're going to have to know what you would do. You know, if all of this comes to a halt. You would want to find out who you were before you were tested. You know, and the wireless woman is about that. Let's unplug and figure out who we are, who we were called to be, who we're destined to be. Let's find a way. Let's chart a path that doesn't depend on capitalism and money and millions of dollars. Because I'm going to tell you something. All they have to do is move one decimal point in the Fed. Why won't they get rid of debt? Why won't they get rid of the credit bureau? Why won't they get rid of, there is a reason these people that are stacking up this money and Bitcoin and all this stuff, they're going to the moon. You think that's a coincidence? You know, the man just up my rent last night because white is on the moon. So I'm going to tell you something. If you're not going to have the type of money to be on the moon in the next 10 years, I hear a lot of people talking to me about get rich quick schemes real estate, flipping, all this different stuff. And I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that the 1% 
are the 1% for a reason. Every time somebody becomes a millionaire, somebody is becoming a billionaire. And every time somebody is becoming a billionaire, somebody is about to be a trillionaire. They're moving that goalpost and they're doing that for a reason. Those of us that are in the middle, middle class, those of us that are in the middle class will never catch them. And the crazy thing about it is they're erasing history because if you look back in history, everyone seems to have known that but us. In the French Revolution, when they overthrew the bourgeoisie, it was because the upper class was crushing the middle class down into poverty. In America, when we decided that we weren't going to be taxed by the British anymore, that we weren't going to be a British colony, it was because they were taxing us into poverty while the king was living off the fat of the land. How can you sit around now and side with the same people that make America horrible? Forget make America great again. America, the whole American experiment has never been a great idea. The free market does not promote competition. It promotes tyranny and destruction. And we're two minutes away from being in a fascist country. And I know even just saying that is hate speech, especially as a black woman, but this has trickled all the way down into my community now. My community has never been concerned with it, but everyone has run away from the black race because we refuse to embrace the truth of what's going on. And honestly, it's not a race war anymore. It's not even a gender war anymore. Everybody that is in the middle class is going to be crushed down into poverty very soon. And it's all so that the rich can become richer, so that they can be on the moon when this thing hits the earth. But here's what they don't know. Here's what God told me. You will survive. You will survive it. You will be here after it's all over and you will inherit the land. At the end of this story, you win if you can endure to the end. If you don't take the mark of the beast and give into greed and capitalizing on your fellow man. If you can keep your humanity intact, God is going to give the earth back to you. If you will take it with care, if you'll take care of animals and the environment and the planet, he will give it back to you. He's going to take this planet from the, from the evil capitalistic monsters that have made slaves out of animals and people that pollute the sky that would burst this earth clean open trying to drill for oil and i'm gonna tell you something the real empaths the really empathic people that are living in this time are tired you can feel god's you can feel god's exhaustion you can feel it on you it's heavy it's over you every day when you wake up it's like you just don't want to get up you don't want to do it again you feel like you're in groundhog's day and that's what you're feeling you're feeling the lament of the father but he's going to give you strength it's like the it's like the Kate Bush song. I know you have a little strength in you left. You know, he's going to give us the strength to mount up on wings as eagles and to fly through these next years. If you will believe, if you will embrace that it's you and that the time is now. And I'm going to be honest. I say that I, mean, I can't tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I do. I took time to get away and get along with God. And, and I've said it, if you look in my channel description, I don't know the way. But I'm willing to lock elbows with people who want, like I do, to find the way out of this matrix. That's all John did. He prepared the way. He stood as a voice in the wilderness preparing the way. And that's what we have to do. We have to be people that value reality over fantasy, that value community 
over selfishness. We just have to begin to embrace these values again each day in the little decisions that we make, in what you pick out at the grocery store, in in opening your door to help someone as opposed to driving right on by, in trusting again that there's goodness in you that the world needs. You know, it's time to take that red pill. Even if you don't believe what I'm saying, by now you have to know that something is wrong. By now you have to at least have a question that you want answered. And if you feel like I feel, go ahead and drop me a headphones emoji down in the comments. And in the words of the late Fred Hampton, America is on fire. And we're only concerned with two things, water and escape. But maybe we can all come together. You know, power is for the people. And let's just show up here each week and see what we can come up with together. I am going to soon be doing lives. I'm going to start the live stream, hopefully early in the new year. I am also working with one of my friends to put together a scaled down version of a spa day or a retreat so that we can get some like-minded women together and men we're going to need you on this journey to getting people unplugged i hope you got something out of this podcast i know that there's going to be a lot more to come um i don't know what i will be saying anymore because i did not anticipate saying this but Molly, you in trouble, girl. We in trouble. And we don't have a whole lot more time. But until the next time, I am your girl. But you can see that I'm empty. See you in the next one. You stole my soul from me.